Hey, how's it going? Going all right here. Biennia had made a video entitled Gay Men Can Be Creeps Too. And oh, can they. I, uh, I lost track a long time ago in how many people I've heard say something to the degree of, uh, oh, uh, well, you know, straight men are only as straight as, uh, uh, you know, how much alcohol they've had, you know, type of thing. You know, oh, g give them enough alcohol and they're not straight anymore. You know, I, I've just, I've just seen it so many times. Uh, especially though in, in my younger years when the people that I was hanging out with were younger as well. You know, that kind of attitude. And it never really, I'd, I'd heard them say that in front of a number of other people, straight people, and they don't, they weren't called out for it, you know? And it's just like, well, if someone said that to a woman, about a woman, oh, well, they're, they're not, you know, oh, she's not interested in me until I give, get her enough, enough alcohol. I mean, it, it would be called rape, you know? It should be called that when gay men try to do that to straight men. It, it should be kind of the same thing, really. And I have a memory of, a, of an ex-friend who, someone who tries to, uh, I, how do I, how do I explain why I just didn't want to be his friend anymore? He's, he's someone who, he gets his jollies off of telling people how pathetic they are. And he does it in such a way that someone will come back for more. Um, it's really the only way I know how to, to say it. Um, he especially... I mean, he makes himself sound like he's an expert on almost everything. And you'll, you'll want to go there because, oh, well, he's read so much. He's, one of his standard sta statements is, uh, I know more than you'll know in 10 of your lifetimes kind of thing, right? And I look back at it, I'm like, yeah, why did I, why did I keep going back? And he doesn't, really have, he doesn't really have any friends that come over anymore. But I met him when I was 17. I'm trying to remember who I met him through. I can't actually remember fully. But even when I was 17 and he was almost, I think he might have been 40 at that time, maybe 38 or something, and his whole thing was, was trying to seduce young-looking uh, uh, guys, you know, get, get them drunk, and then he'd say, oh, uh, let me, I, I do massage, and then, of course, moves it on from massage to something else, and when someone is like, uh, when, when I would uh, say I, I'm not comfortable with that, he's like, well, I th he, he tells me, I think you're being selfish. Selfish? For not, for not wanting to have you suck my dick? I'm selfish? Well, you know, well, you're not all that. And of course, the way that I was then, you know, I... I would just keep coming back for more, you know, abuse of... of uh, I mean, he didn't... Eventually, he stopped trying to get in my pants, but then it was just this thing of him getting on his uh, trying to degrade anyone who comes over in this element of, oh, he knows so much more. The way that he would uh, just destroy any, anyone who would come over to his place and try to show him uh, their art or their music, he would just destroy them over it. Just talk about how, how bad this is and how bad that is and, oh, and you're not really, uh, you're not really saying anything enough. You, you have to suffer in order to make good music. That's his whole mindset. The, the only, you know, probably one of his favorite uh, music styles is blues because, you know, and only the older people doing blues really have anything to say because they've experienced something, you know, as if, and the only good music is something that describes suffering. Um, doesn't give a shit about uh, the music itself. And then he got all offended when uh, he eventually... I, I, I told, he, he would tell me he, he, he does music too. And I don't know why I'm going on about this, but he would tell me he, he does music too. And when he eventually showed me 
it was him basically making a MIDI file of classical music. And it's just like, um, I thought you wrote your own stuff, but he doesn't. And he's like, oh, well, you, uh, you, you shouldn't try. There's no point in trying to write your own stuff because everything that's already been written has already been, you know, has ar anything that could be ever written has already been written. Oh, God. Was I a glutton for punishment and going over to his place over and over again? But, uh, yeah, he would continually try to seduce people that, that came over. He wanted young, young men to come over, people that were underage included. And yet, I don't know how many years ago it was that, uh, you know, I was questioning my sexuality and, and uh, talking about how I've never been a top before. And I talked, and I mentioned at some point, you know, I've never, uh, I've never fucked a woman before. I've never been with a woman before. And he was just like, because he had, he's gay, but is in a relationship with a woman who they have an open relationship. And because I said that while she was there, even though he would do all this stuff with guys in front of her, you know, because I said that, he got so offended. How could you say that in front of a woman? What? And every time I would talk to him after that time, he's like, you need to apologize. I said, I'm sorry I said that. What? What's the deal? You know, these double standards were just, fuck, man. He can sit there and seduce, ki you know, uh, people who are underage. He could get his straight friends drunk so he would take advantage of them and eventually he lost a number of his friends as a result of that and yet he's going to get offended because i said i've never fucked a woman before it, he's he's one of the ones that it just the double standard version of feminism right oh my goodness um and when i've talked about how i tend to not defend myself uh until it eventually just comes out as blah. Um, he was probably, besides my grandmother, he was probably the, the largest influence in my life that gave me a problem with that. You know, I could never finish what I was saying and he would interrupt. He's, he's the kind of guy who I would just, like, I would say something simple like, oh, when I see this move across the screen, and he'd stop me and tell me, well, you know that, that things don't actually move across the screen. It's just pixels. And he'd go on to this 10-minute spiel about pixels. I'm like, dude, I already know this. But you can't interrupt him or you're being rude. Yeah. Just, do you kind of get the, get the idea of the kind of person he is? But he was one of the main people who I would, you know, in my memory uh, that would uh, basically make the statement that, well, they're only as straight as how much alcohol they've had. Yeah, it's, it's sad. It's, it's, it's sad that people let gay guys get away with saying that sort of thing and don't, and, and don't call them out on it. It's sad that that, that still happens now. I've, I have a number of people in my, uh, in, in some of my gay circles on social media, who I've still seen say, say that same stuff today. Oh, they're, they're only as, as straight as, as how much alcohol they've had. And I just, why is that, why is that accepted? Well, it's because someone doesn't want to be that person who will be considered anti-gay for, for calling them out on it. Because that's what would happen. If someone straight made some really nasty comment about a gay guy that does that, they would be, they would be labeled homophobic. It's just sad. It's just sad. I just keep thinking about it. It's just sad that I would keep going back to that guy's house. He's the one who would basically tell, just essentially tell me that uh, I shouldn't make my own music. I shouldn't try to, to write my own stuff. I should just, you know, work with something, work with the greats. And, and, and I try to have discussions with him, you know. Everything about him is, if it's something isn't established yet, it's crap. The more established something is, the better it is. The idea that the only good music is music that's made a lot of money.
The only good art is art that's made a lot of money. Just... And because he was so well studied, um, I would believe him a lot of the time. Every so often, I still, in, in my head, I go, what if Lonnie was right? What if my music isn't worth anything because I'm not describing uh, pain enough? I haven't suffered enough, so uh, I, I can't really, you know... I, I remember him making comments about, uh, about Phil Collins. Oh, man, does he hate Phil Collins? Because, uh, you know... Oh, Phil Collins, he's so superficial. I remember him saying things about uh, the Carpenters. Oh, well, the only thing they ever had to worry about was the temperature of their pool. Even though Karen Carpenter, you know, died of anorexia, she obviously had some issues, but because they, they didn't actually suffer the way that, that he thinks people need to suffer to make the right music, you know. Now, I'm not saying that uh, the Carpenters stuff is some... I mean, their stuff is kind of elevatory, right? Their, their, their music is kind of considered elevator music, or at least the old standard for elevator music. Now, elevator music is, is smooth jazz. But, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know why I'm going on about it. Well, I do, because her, her uh, Biennia's video uh, reminded me of this stuff. But I am disappointed in myself that I, I would just keep going back there. And he's someone that would continually try to make me feel bad for being emotional. His view is that everyone should be like Spock and then use, use the arts to express pain. I don't know, man. I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm going on and on. I'm, I'm repeating myself, but... Uh, it's just sad, again, how gay men are given leeway on being rapey. And there is this aspect to, you know, uh, gay bars, or at least gay bars of the past, where if you went to a gay bar and someone feels you up, um, you should never get offended at that. Because, well, that's why you went to the bar, isn't it? It's kind of weird. It, it really is. Uh, really is. Anyway. <laughs> 